Hey everyone, this is Caroline coming to you again. Thanks for watching and joining me today on my channel. Okay, Google, what is a voice kit AIY? On the website Amazon.com, they say, with this AIY voice kit from Google, you can build a standalone voice recognition system using the Google Assistant or add voice recognition and natural language processing to your Raspberry Pi based projects. So if you saw my previous video, I volunteered at a STEM day where we taught 13 kids how to make one of these AIY kits. Uh, so we ended up buying a lot of kits and now I'm going to share with you tips and tricks, things I learned from uh, volunteering at that workshop that day. First thing I learned is that Micro Center currently as of the time that I am recording this video has discounted these kits to $3.14. They're for sale for about $25 retail. Now we had to buy a whole bunch of kits to do this project. At one point we thought we had 25 uh, kids coming to our project. So we had to go find 25 of these kits. But what I did notice is that I would go on the Micro Center website every day and some days they would be sold out. There would be no kits. And some days they would have you know two kits available. And then the next day they would get a new shipment in and they would have more than 10 kits available. So if you don't see it um, the day that you go to microcenter.com, you don't see the kits available, check back the next day and they might become available or become friends with the manager and uh, and see if he'll tell you when more kits arrive. So that's point number one is that you can get the kits pretty cheap. You still have to buy a Raspberry Pi though and that's you know 35 to 50 dollars somewhere in there for everything you need for a Raspberry Pi. Number two, these kits are different from what was given away with the Magpie magazine slightly. They have improved upon the project. So in the original kit you had to assemble the arcade button yourself now the arcade button does come assembled uh, so it is a little bit easier of an install to do. The instructions are different, uh, the software has been upgraded and you do have to download the software yourself off of the website and I'll link to that below. Number three, very important, do not do a sudo app get update or an upgrade. Now for a lot of you developers out there, hobbyists who've been tinkering around with this Raspberry Pi for a while, I think that's kind of an automatic thing you do is you, you burn the SD card and then you say, hey, sudo app get update, sudo app get upgrade. That will crash the whole project. Do not do that. Take the image as is and start following the instructions as is to get this project working. Next, I did get questions about how to insert the SD card. Now, if you are a hobbyist and, you're, and you already have a Raspberry Pi and you're familiar with this, you know exactly how to insert the SD card. It's exactly the same as normal. For people who are not so familiar with the Raspberry Pi, uh, I will, um, I'll show you right now how to insert the SD card. It does have to, the contacts do have to face up. They do have to touch the green uh, part of it here and it does not sit flush with the board either. So what ages can you do this project with? According to the documentation inside this box, it says this is recommended for ages 14 and up. So this isn't exactly a kid project. If you have young kids, I would encourage you to use Snap Circuits or um, Creation Crate or something else. This project is for 14 and up according to its own documentation. Uh, so some of the kids were under 14 and they had, it, this project was harder for them. I had one kid that um, you do have to have a Google account, a Gmail account in order uh, to get this working. Uh, I had one kid under 14, uh, 11 or 12 or something, real, real close to the age. And uh, when she went in to uh, create her project, I think it wouldn't let her uh, because she had an account for somebody who was 11 years old. Uh, so if you are going to do this project, um, definitely do with an adult. Um, and, but you know, I, I hate to say, you know, hey, all these projects are great for your kids and do this with your kids. This project is great for adults who just want to learn. So don't, don't feel like this is a kid or you have to, you know, have a kid to do this project. It's, this is really, an, I would say at 14, I would say this is really uh, something that I think adults can enjoy. Uh, also in the documentation, it says this project should take you about two hours or less than two hours to do. Now, when I did this as a big group project with 13 girls, we did the project. It took us closer to four hours to do the project. Um, and I think the, the more time you have, the better so that they understand the project instead of 
even on, even with four hours, I felt like I was kind of rushing through the project because I was so concerned about finishing. Um, you know, they're there for a certain amount of time and then the parents want to come pick them up. So you don't want to not finish the project. So you kind of rush through a few steps in here and there. If you had more time, if we had scheduled six hours to do the project, we could have really done a deep dive on the project and or, you know, with the extra time, there are extra projects that you can do in here. And I will go into that in a future video. Next tip. Do not use the Raspberry Pi 3B Plus. Use, this kit is configured for the 3B. I know the Raspberry Pi 3B Plus just came out and you wanna get the latest and greatest thing, great, go for it. But it does not work with the kit, with this image. Um, I did have uh, a friend try it with the B Plus. It wouldn't even boot, okay? It, the rainbow screen came up and then it never, actually, we never actually got to a desktop or home screen. Uh, so I think there is a workaround for this. I'm not going to get into that in this video. The workaround, the easiest way to do this is to do this with the 3B. Next tip, and I was really surprised by this, is the defect rate on these kits can be high. Uh, so at $3.14, you know, you buy a few extra kits. It's fine. It's great. If you're ordering this online and you're paying $25, uh, it's, it's a little bit more painful. I understand. I have a friend, Wayne Courtney, he ordered a kit. His kit, one of the leads to the button was broken, so his button didn't work. He did fix it by using his mechanical skills and adding a resistor. Uh, so most people aren't gonna go through the trouble of that. In my class of 13 girls, there were two defective kits. Uh, the first kit, the speaker just flat out didn't work. Uh, so what I did, I'm in the middle of a class, I'm trying to you know get this going. I we had extra kits because we originally thought there were gonna be 25 kids in this class. I just, I just pulled out another kit, opened it, pulled out the speakers, swapped out the speaker, boom, it magically started working. And then the next kid, uh, same problem. Um, we, we went in to do check uh, speaker, nothing came out. I opened another kit, took out that speaker, uh, replaced it, nothing happened. It still, the speaker still didn't work. What the problem was with her project was the hat was bad. So I, we had to, and it's pretty hard to pull the hat off of the Raspberry Pi because you've got all those pins in place. So I, we had to just completely disassemble her project and reassemble it with another uh, kit. So out of 13, uh, two kits were defective and that was a little bit disappointing. But since we only paid three dollars and fourteen cents per kit because we went to Micro Center, it wasn't it wasn't so bad, and it was good that we had extra kits. So if you're going to do this in a group project, buy a few extra kits. You are you may need them. Here's another tip: if you are doing this project uh, as a group with lots of kids, start out with I just need to get a sharpie mark and have everybody write their name on their kit so they know which one is theirs and they don't get them mixed up. And that kind of grew into why don't we get stickers and multicolored. Um, sharpies and markers and and then they can decorate their kits because I mean really honestly this is a little bit plain here so it was it was great that everybody wrote their name on it signed it you know like it was their work of art and then put stickers on it and really personalized it uh, that was a lot of fun and it's great to do as a group and my last tip for doing this as a group project is to insert the SD card at the as the very last step of the physical assembly. And I know this from experience. The first time I assembled this project myself, I put the SD card in the Raspberry Pi and then shoved it all in and broke my SD card, my micro SD card, literally in half. That was very sad. Uh, so when I'm running a workshop, what I do is I give the kids their, their kits, I give them their Raspberry Pis, they do the entire assembly and when they finish their assembly, they come to me and say, hey, I need the SD card. So then I hand out the SD cards last. That ensures that no kid breaks an SD card in half. And it is in the documentation that the SD card goes in last in the physical assembly. And those are my tips and tricks from what I learned from volunteering at a workshop where we did the AIY project. Thanks for watching and please subscribe. Bye.